mechanisms for the nucleophiles and electrophiles. Before we get into the different types of reactions like SN1, SN2, E1, and E2, we need to go over the basics. And those are nucleophiles and electrophiles. In organic chemistry, 90% of the course is all about mechanisms. And nucleophiles and electrophiles are the basics of those mechanisms. All right, they're the two components to do mechanisms. So nucleophiles, you can think of as like a puzzle piece. And electrophiles, you can think of as a complete puzzle or almost complete puzzle. So what am I talking about here? So say we have a puzzle that is 99% complete. Say it's a 100 piece puzzle and we have 99 pieces attached already. It's only missing one piece. Well, what's gonna happen is this one puzzle piece is gonna fit in to the remaining space, okay? We can call this puzzle piece a nucleophile. It is essentially going to attack the puzzle and come, you know, become part of it, essentially, okay? That is what a nucleophile is. In other words, an electrophile is the puzzle itself, and you can say that the puzzle is accepting the nucleophile. It's saying, hey, come on, you know, come, you know, come along, right? So we can actually com complete this puzzle that we have, right? We want to complete this puzzle. So the electrophile is basically telling the nucleophile, hey, come on over. I have a space available. Come and attack me, right? That's what's happening here. Another thing, you, you know, another way you can think about it is think about um, the military, like uh, dog fighting with jets, right? One jet will fire a missile to the other jet. The one that the jet that is firing the missile is the nucleophile, and the jet that is accepting, not accepting, he's gonna die, he blow up, but you know, he's the one that is, you know, gonna get blown up and accepting, I guess, yeah, being being attacked. Okay, that's what I'm looking for. Being attacked is the electrophile. Okay, so the jet that's gonna be blown up, gonna be attacked, is the electrophile. The one that is doing the attacking is the nucleophile. Okay? That's what's happening. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about nucleophiles. There are three methods of determining where nucleophiles are on a molecule. One is lone pairs, one is inductive effects, and the other one is double bonds. So let's do lone pairs first. Nucleophile stands, literally stand, it translates to nucleus lover in Greek. And nucleophiles are atoms that have pairs of electrons that are able to be donated. So what is essentially happening is these electrons are the ones that are doing the attacking. Okay, they are the missiles. And they attack electrophiles. So typically, the more negatively charged an atom is, the stronger nucleophile it will be. We have these two molecules that we have, ethoxide and ethanol. You will notice that ethoxide has an oxygen with three lone pairs. And as indicated with you know, the lone pairs, but also the negatively charged sign. So this is negatively charged. The ethanol here, the oxygen has two lone pairs. It is not negatively charged, but it does have two lone pairs. However, so what this means is more free electrons means it's more negative, means it's a stronger nucleophile, okay? So let's say we go, we go back to this puzzle, right? This puzzle dilemma here. Say we had an identical piece just like this one, okay? They look very similar, but one's a little off, okay? Which one's gonna fit better into the complete puzzle? To complete the puzzle, I should say. Which one's gonna fit better? better? It's gonna be the one that, has, that is more negative or that has more electrons to it, okay? It's basically gonna be more reactive it's basically like a supercharged missile compared to a regular missile, right? The, our U.S. government spends millions of dollars, billions of dollars on our military, right? We have some high, amazing missiles, right? Very, very expensive ones, and then we have some okay ones, right? So this is like the really expensive one, and this is the one like the okay one, okay? Inductive effects. Scenario two or method two. What is inductive effects? So what happens if you don't have any electrons, I mean, uh, lone pairs available, right? You don't, see any, you don't see any here on this molecule, right? So what would you do? This is where inductive effects comes in. Have you, have you ever watched Harry Potter? If you should, I, I mean, if you haven't, I really recommend you should. I really love Harry Potter. 
But you may have heard of dementors. Dementors essentially suck the soul out of you. This is what's happening with inductive effects. What's going on here is this carbon is sucking the electrons away from lithium. The reason this is happening is because lithium is less electronegative than carbon. And the way we know this is through the periodic table. So sometimes, yeah, you, you know, during your exam, you're going to be given a periodic table. This is why, especially for these type of problems. You need to identify which one's more electronegative in this, in this instance when you don't see any lone pairs. Carbon is more electronegative than lithium. And the reason we know that is because on the periodic table, the atoms that are more to the right of the table are more electronegative, and the ones that are to the left are less electronegative. Lithium is located on the very, very, very left of the periodic table, meaning it's not electronegative whatsoever. Carbon is, very, is not that electronegative, but when you compare it to everything else in this molecule, it is more electronegative. So what's going to be happening is elect uh, carbon, since it's electronegative, it's going to be draining the electrons from lithium. It's going to want to steal it or pull it towards itself. Not, go not going to completely take it away from lithium, but it's going to pull, pull its electrons towards itself. Okay, And that's is why we have this sign here. This sign is indicating that carbon is partially negative. Not completely negative, right? It's no negative sign like this, but it is partially negative. This is what this sign means. And this arrow is telling us which way the electrons are going. They are going towards the carbon, right? They're going, they're starting here and going this way, towards the carbon, okay? Now carbon is partially negative. This means it could act as a nucleophile if it has given the chance. This is what inductive effects are. So think about this carbon is like a dementor. It's sucking the electrons away from lithium. All right. Now, lastly, is scenario three, or double bonds, also known as pi bonds. Whenever you see a double bond, you can start to think, okay, this could be a nucleophile, right? It will do a lot of tacking. This will come into play a little later in organic chemistry, but mainly you know these ones, all right? So let's do some practice problems. Identify all the nucleophiles for each molecule. So let's do A. Well, A, we have no, we have absolutely no electrons here we can see, right? So this means we're relying on inductive effects or double bonds. And we have no double bonds here, so the only answer is inductive effects. So we have a carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, carbon here. This carbon right here is gonna be pulling no electrons from the lithium through inductive effects because lithium is much less electronegative than carbon. So this will give carbon a partially negative charge. That is ugly. Oops. Da, 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 da. Whatever, good enough. Partially negative charge. So this means this carbon is now the nucleophile. This carbon is a nucleophile. It will do the attacking. All right. All right, let's do B. B, although you don't see any electrons drawn in, you should know that you need to draw them in. Oxygen has two lone pairs like this. Nitrogen has one. So automatically, we can basically ignore inductive effects here because we see lone pairs. And this means that this will be the electro uh, nucleophile. And then this will be the nucleophile as well. Now, I want to make clear the nitrogen and the oxygen are the nucleophiles. It's not the entire molecule, nor is it also the hydrogens here. It's not. It's only the electronegative atom, which is the oxygen or the nitrogen. Those are the nucleophiles. They will be the doing the tacking. All right, C. Even though we don't see any electrons, we need to draw them in. So there will be two here for nitrogen, two electrons for nitrogen, one pair, and this means that this will be the nucleophile. All right, D. Well, we see a double bond here. We don't see any electronegative atoms, and since we don't have any, any like kind of, uh, we don't have any inductive effects going on because it's all carbons. That means that the double bond is the nucleophile here. 
Sweet. All right, let's do electrophiles. Electrophiles in Greek is, uh, is electron lovers. And they are atoms that are electron deficient, therefore are attacked by nucleophiles. Okay? There are two methods to identify electrophiles. One is super easy, and that is carbocations. Anytime you see a carbon atom, you know, this is a carbon, with a plus sign like this, this is indicating a carbocation. The carbon is positively charged. And immediately, whenever, whenever you see a positive charge in organic chemistry, 99.99999% of time, it's an electrophile. Okay, so it makes life so easy. So the nucleophile would come and attack here. That, that's what would happen. So anytime you see a positive charge, that carbon that has the positive charge will become the electrophile. It will always be the electrophile. Now there are inductive effects here. So this was kind of the opposite here. Chlorine is super electronegative. Very, very, very electronegative compared to carbon. So it's going to act like the Dementor and suck the living soul out of carbon, sucking the electrons away from it. And we know this because the arrow here is telling us the electrons are going towards chlorine because it's pulling the electrons away from carbon. This is going to give carbon a partially positive charge. Remember, electrons are negative. Always think of electrons as negative, right? So if it's losing if it's losing electrons, it's not really losing electrons, but you know, if it's being pulled away from the carbon, that means carbon is going to get a little bit more positive because electrons are negative. And if we pull them away, that means carbon is going to become less negative or more positive in, in other sense. So then this carbon is, become, is going to become the electrophile because it has a partial positive charge. So identify all the electrophiles in each molecule. Okay, so the electrophile is right here. This is the electrophile, and why is it? Let me just write it in here. Is an electrophile is because the oxygen right here is pulling electrons away from the carbon through inductive effects, right? So. This carbon right here has a partially positive charge because the electrons are going towards the oxygen because it's pulling. Oxygen is pulling those electrons. It's acting like a dementor and sucking those electrons away from that carbon, making that carbon positively charged, also known as an electrophile. You're also wondering, could this be a, a nucleophile? Because, you know, oxygen has those lone pairs right here. And then the, we have a double bond here. You would be correct, but it will also depend what the other molecule is that would be, you know, that's in play. Because you know, mechanisms need to involve more than one molecule. So we, we don't know what the other molecule is. So we can't say for sure, but let's just focus on electrophiles. Okay, what about this? This is arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid is used in your body to make uh, hormones. It's a precursor. Now, organic chemistry professors love to do this kind of shit, right? They put this huge, big-ass molecule here and try to scare you on tests. But I promise you, it's all the same thing, right? No matter how big the molecule is, as long as you know the basics, you're good. You will notice here that we have two oxygens here, all right? And the rest of the molecule, we have nothing else that of use. Well, we just have a bunch of carbons and double bonds, right? Yes, they could be nucleophiles, but we're only focused on electrophiles. So since we have no plus signs anywhere, right? No carbocations anywhere, right? And the inductive effect is only going on in this region here. We can basically ignore everything else. Everything else is garbage. So I'm going to tell you right now that this right here, this carbon right here is the electrophile. And the reason is because this oxygen is pulling electrons away from this carbon. It's acting like the Dementor, a vampire. It's going in this direction, right? And then also this oxygen will also be pulling 
electrons. So it's really, it's really being strained. Okay? So this is why it's an electrophile. It is partially positive. All right? And that is it. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Until next time, later.